Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, our today's lecture is about uh, a disease uh, condition uh, which is known as enterotoxemia, also known as overeating disease of sheep and goats. Uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, I will, will be discussing with you uh, the etiology of this disease, signs and symptoms which are related to this disease condition, and then uh, how we can prevent uh, our animals from uh, this disease. Uh, enterotoxemia, it's a frequently uh, severe disease of sheep uh, and goats of all ages. It is uh, caused by two uh, strains of bacteria called uh, um, Clostridium perfingens. Uh, uh, the strains are termed type C and D. So these bacteria are normally found in low numbers in the ga gastrointestinal tract of all sheep and goats. So now the question is uh, how when uh, and why do they cause disease? I mean, if they are present already in the gastrointestinal tract of all the sheep and goats, then why they don't cause the disease? And when uh, they uh, become the causal organism of this disease? So uh, these, these organisms are normally, they are laying low in the small and large intestines. That is, they are present in relatively low numbers and uh, appear to be in a relatively quiescent state in the normal healthy animal. Um, so which, which, which factors they trigger them to cause the disease? Uh, I would say it's a change in the diet of the animal. So most commonly, the change that triggers the disease is an increase in the, um, in the amount of grain, protein supplements, um, milk or milk replacer, like for lambs and kids, or grass that the sheep or goat, uh, they are ingesting. So collectively, these feeds are rich in starch, sugar, um, or protein. So when unusually high levels of these nutrients, they reach the intestine, uh, Clostridium perfingens, it undergoes explosive growth because it, it is getting its required food, increasing its numbers rapidly within the intestine. So as the organism grows in number, it releases very potent toxins uh, that harm the animal. These toxins can cause damage to uh, the intestine as well as numerous other organs. So this can result in fatalities, particularly in the non-vaccinated animal or in the newborn lamb or kid who whose dam has not been vaccinated. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms. Uh, the signs of enterotoxemia uh, in sheep and goats are the animals, they may abruptly go off of feed and become lethargic, uh, anorexia. Uh, then uh, affected animals, they may show signs of stomach pain, such as kicking at their belly repeatedly, laying down and getting up, laying on their sides, panting and crying out. So these are the second uh, signs. And diarrhea may develop. In some cases, uh, there is a blood visible in the loose stool. Animals may lose the ability to stand. They lay on their sides and extend their legs with their head and neck um, extended back over their withers. So this posture is caused by the effects of the toxins on the brain. So death commonly occurs within minutes to hours after this sign is seen. So because enterotoxemia, it can progress so quickly animals may be found dead with no previous signs of the disease. So in sheep and goats, uh, I would say it's very dangerous and fatal disease, which, which is being um, I mean, found and we can prevent it very easily. Now, going towards the treatment, uh, 
if we talk about the treatment of enterotoxemia, it may not be successful in severe cases. Many veterinarians, they treat mild cases with analgesics, probiotics, um, oral electrolyte solutions and antisera, which is a solution of concentrated antibodies that neutralize the toxins that these bacteria produce. So more severe cases, they may require intravenous fluids, antibiotic therapy, and other types of supportive care, such as supplemental oxygen. So this was about the treatment. Now, how we can prevent uh, our animals of getting this disease? So prevention is, uh, uh, I would say, of enterotoxemia, it's far more likely to be successful than um, trying to treat the, 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 the disease. And in uh, the prevention strategies, we use two things, two important, we adopt two strategies. The first one is vaccination. And the second one is feeding strategies. So uh, we all know that vaccination is the cornerstone to prevention of this disease. For sheep and goats, there are multiple vaccines which are available that induce immunity to the toxins generated by uh, Clostridium perfringens type C and D. So because tetanus is also an important disease to prevent in sheep and goats, so many veterinarians, they recommend that sheep and goats be vaccinated uh, with a vaccine that also includes or induces product protection against tetanus. So these vaccines are often termed three-way vaccines because they induce protection against three bacteria which are involved, like Clostridium perfringens uh, type C, which causes the enterotoxemia, Clostridium perfringens type D, which causes uh, uh, the enterotoxemia, and the last one is Clostridium tetanoi, the bacterium that causes tetanus. So adult sheep and goats, uh, uh, when initiating vaccination for a given sheep or goat, all enterotoxemia um, uh, or tetanus vaccine, they requires, uh, require two doses to induce effective immunity. So these doses are usually administered 10 to 14 days apart. So one each, once each adult sheep or goat has received these two uh, doses, or repeat vaccination uh, should occur at least once per year. So you see uh, the vaccination is it's very easy and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, do three-way vaccination by uh, not only for the this uh, enterotoxemia but also for tetanus because they both uh, uh, two strains of uh, enterotoxemia and one uh, bacteria of uh, tetanus they belong to the same uh, genus Clostridia. So um, about uh, the second strategy, which we use feeding strategies, uh, we can use smart feeding strategies. Uh, will also they uh, will enable you to limit the potential for this disease to affect affect your uh, herd or flock. So the causative bacteria, it proliferate in the intestine in response to ingestion of abnormally high levels of starch, sugar, or protein. So you need to be careful how you feed certain feedstuffs that contain high um, levels of these nutrients, such as grains, silage, or haylage, lush pasture, milk or milk replacers, and protein supplements. So, I would suggest a complete feeds like uh, pellets. They are designed to be fed to induce gain in lambs or kids. They can also uh, trigger this disease if fed in excess. So uh, when feeding these high risk feedstuffs, divide the daily allotment of each animal into as many small um, uh, feedings uh, as if uh, feasible, say three to four feedings, rather than providing such feeds in a single large meal. Uh, 
So it is also advisable to feed roughages such as hay before feeding these high, uh, higher risk feeds. Uh, simply to allow the animals to become full on hay beforehand so that animal could not uh, in, uh, have intake of these uh, uh, green rich uh, diets or the concentrates. So this helps to uh, limit the potential of overeating on high risk feedstuffs such as grain. Um, uh, and uh, another important uh, feeding strategy is uh, that always make feed changes slowly. You don't have to change the feed suddenly. If you want to change the feeding regime of sheep and goats, even if, if for larger animals, you, you will have to give some time to the gastrointestinal tract of the animals. So if you are planning to increase the amount of grain uh, fed to a flock or herd. So always uh, do uh, it in uh, gradual increments over several days. So this helps the bacteria in the stomach to accommodate to the diet, making it uh, less likely that the troublesome bacteria, they will get access to the nutrients. So um, uh, you have to make sure that you watch your animals for signs of dominance by one or more individuals. So they can boss the others away from the grain and overeat. Alternatively, the shy animals, they can hold back from feeding and become so hungry that they overeat. That is why uh, divide your herd or flock as necessary and make sure to provide an adequate number of feeding sites or feeder space to enable all animals an equal chance to eat. So uh, there are, is another uh, important strategy regarding the feeding is a heavy milking heavily milking dams they may need to be fed more roughages and less concentrate to limit the excessive milk production that might endanger their offspring that is why I keep the feed schedule consistent to lactating doughs and ewes to limit fluctuations in milk volume for their nursing uh, offsprings I think uh, that was uh, all about uh, the enterotoxemia. Thank you very much.